Those waterfalls would not exist if you didn't dig this down two feet, right? That's two feet or more of waterfalls and you wouldn't have them. Like my mind working was I tried to go with a lot of the weathered limestone yep. down here and I went with the mossy mountain boulders up top. In nature, you would find the mossy mountain boulders in, in the mountains and then this stuff kind of carving away at the earth and creating that limestone-y type look. So Wow, deep, Trevor. A, a lot of things. So far, what's your favorite part of the pond? Like just in the section we're at. Oh, man. That's because so there's, hard to there's say. more. <laughs> when this thousand gallon reservoir fills up, because it's easily gonna <laughs> chicken scaring the hell out of me. <laughs> Was it worth it? Ah. Would you do it all over again? <laughs> we are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Welcome back everybody. I'm here with Trevor and he's about to take us on the first tour of your backyard. Yep. yep. Right? I've not actually been guided on a tour before, so I'm kind of excited <laughs> to do this. Usually I'm the one building it and I'm showing everybody else, but this is a treat for me and I know it's gonna be a treat for you guys. Like this is so awesome. Where do you want to start? Let's start in the beginning with the waterfalls. Up here, we have our wetland filter, as always, starting everything. And on top of the wetland, we have a spill bowl. I decided to get really creative with things and just incorporate all these different unique building materials. So one of the things that I love to do is create cohesive pieces. Keeping it all very cohesive is yeah, important. Yeah, the balance of it. You've got the bowls here and the bowls over here and the brickwork here and the brickwork down there. The logs are like strategically placed. You know, one of my favorite things that you've done with your project is is the wood and it's not just the addition of the wood but the wood has meaning and purpose there what i can't stand is when i see a piece of firewood like thrown into the <laughs> yeah. middle of a stream you've actually taken the time to carve those things and place them in so it actually looks like they're holding back the earth or the water has pushed it into that position and it got locked up by boulders that's you being an artist and, and that's you know critiquing nature right yeah. so you want to look at how nature does these things you want to look at how the artists do these things right <laughs> and kind of combine it in and make it your own, but take the useful knowledge that you have and implement it into your features. So what size wetland do you have up on top there? So this is a six aqua block wetland. It's pretty small, but it handles this feature with no problem. Yeah. I am gonna have rainwater coming in here and there could be sediments and whatnot. So I wanted to make sure that I had this thing over filtered and making sure I was taking all the different sediments out. Again, working in the tech department, this is what I do, right? I quote out wetlands all day. I quote out jet systems all day. I quote out negative edges all day. Yeah. So I had to do what I'm talking about on a daily well, basis. And you hear all the positive things of wetland filters on ponds and stuff. What I like about the wetland filter on yours is it creates an upper pool, not where a biofalls, at the end of the day, it's still a container up there, right? And yes, you can hide them and disguise them with plants and everything else, but it's a much smaller upper pool. This is way more to scale with the rest of the system. Let's go up here and check this out because I think it's really important for them to see some of the detail things that I'm looking at and that Trevor put in. So we get up here, look at how cool this log is and how it dips down into here like this. A lot of times we'll see people just take a piece of wood and lay it across, almost like it's a bridge for squirrels or something. <laughs> and that's not what you've done here. This log was here, fell off of something, got locked up by these boulders. Then here's this bowl up here. You did the double notch. Now this is just one of our patio bowls and patio bowls were never designed to be used in a pond like this. These were supposed to be self-contained ponds that sat on people's patios. We just started plumbing them one day and do all this, but look at how much more interest this upper pool gets with these two little simple horsetail falls coming in 
without having to add soil all the way up to here. Yeah, I would love to have a ginormous waterfall, but it just didn't make sense with their layout, right? All this elevation right here that we're standing on was created from the byproduct of the pond. The whole backyard was flat and sloping away, so we had to work with what we had to some extent. Let's take them down to this section here where the wetland overflows through this waterfall. So Trevor, this is the part that blows me away. For a guy that hasn't built water features for a living, he did it with us one summer for six months. Six months, yeah. Right? He took a little sabbatical, he came back, said he wanted to work in the office, and still can build waterfalls like this. I mean, this is top-notch stuff. What you did is you followed the principles that we always share with everybody else. Big rock on one side, big rock on the other side, something simple in between. So whether it's the first water fall there or here it's framed out with a high log high rock here one rock in between you come down here high rock here where that water spins off this rock is then framing out two waterfalls this one and this one so keeping it simple is always the key to building a waterfall i think it starts looking weird when you start stacking a bunch of little boulders you start adding too much rock like a lot of times you'll see rock carried way too far out to the left and to the right and you just don't need that so amazing and it all comes down in what i think is my favorite part of your whole pond the sand bottom floor yeah that was a uh i want to say it's an experiment but i don't know we're a month in and it's looking great in my opinion yeah there's some different debris and whatnot but i we have the silver maple here right like, yeah so it's really looking good it brings it to a different level i feel like the fish when they start to swim through here it looks amazing does it amazing oh they probably look like they're just floating in air especially, it does. At night. especially it's so shallow right here it's the coolest thing and then you talked about the cohesiveness right so you've got the stone wall here you've got it over there i see some cap lights yep. in there <laughs> you've got the steps coming down into this area with another sand bottom floor all with a really rustic bridge not yep. even really a bridge just stepping stones yeah creating again that path that you always yep. like to talk about and you know we have to implement the nature where we can right so as much as we create these man-made things it's nice to bring in the nature aspect to naturalize it act like you're building this stuff around nature now i've been here a couple times yeah. right yeah. And, and I'm still blown away by all the detail, but even that big log right there and the way you cut the capstones to fit around that log is so awesome. It's almost like this was something you started digging up and you couldn't find the bottom of it. So you said, forget it. Instead of digging out this giant log, I'll just build things around this. Yeah. We always say that like when we're dealing with big, large boulders like these, like how you cut the patio to fit around them. The idea is the rock should be so big, it was easier to cut the patio around it rather than move the rock. Yeah. And it adds adds that detail and this project is all about the detail it's just insane so far what's your favorite part of the pond like just in the section we're at oh man that's because so there's hard there's to say more. <laughs> i would say I, I love how natural this section of the waterfall coming in looks and yet it easily transitions into all of this and, and it keeps that same vibe going throughout i think like uh, you were talking about how i always talk about the pathway and that journey like i'm here and i see that it goes down in the distance and i'm so like eager to go <laughs> and the way you've created this pathway that just keeps crisscrossing back and forth yes. is definitely my favorite. And I think the other part I'm really excited about is the future of this pond. The way it's landscaped and everything else, this is truly a pond that's gonna get nicer and nicer and nicer year after year. We know. We know. But everybody else. Oh, we know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, let's go show them the rest. All right, Trevor, we're coming into one of my favorite part, the sunken patio. And I love them because it adds elevation and character in what's relatively a flat backyard. Tell me a little bit about the inspiration and why you wanted to do the sunken patio. So the inspiration was getting more out of this yard, this layout, right? Like, as you were saying earlier, there's no way that we can have these waterfalls without creating this depth right here. Those waterfalls would not exist if you didn't dig this down two feet, right? That's two feet or more of waterfalls, and you wouldn't have them. But that creates problems of its own, right? So you have to think this stuff out. We hit groundwater. You saw earlier in the construction video that we hit groundwater, and it was not fun. Yeah, <laughs> it never is, is no, it? No, no, there's, there's not one time that that was ever said. Uh, so, so, but taking care of it and making sure that you're doing things properly is, is very important when it comes to this type of stuff. But some inspiring parts of it are, are these guys right here. So these were awesome because I actually pulled this idea from you guys in the aqua gardens with your big oh, plants. Oh, that's boxes. gonna be a problem because 
because I trademarked those, uh -oh. right? Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love these. I love this one, and that one cut into that wall over there is so cool. Like I said before, the sunken patio is it's an element that's not complicated to do. And like you said, you have to think it out. Where's all the water going? When it rains, when this thousand gallon reservoir fills up because it's easily gonna <laughs> chicken scare the hell out of me. <laughs> when it rains, that thousand gallon reservoir is gonna fill up pretty quick. Not only because you're collecting the surface area of the pond, but you're also collecting the surface area of this patio and you have downspouts filling up in there. So if you hadn't thought about where this water is gonna go and they set up that extensive drainage system to get rid of this water, this couldn't happen. It could be a big problem. Right, big, big problem. But aesthetically, the sunken patios just add such an awesome element to the project. And look at this waterfall, it's like insane. That's what we were going for, is like to end it with something, with a bang, something really dramatic. And to me, it was really important to make a very loud and obnoxious waterfall that drowns out all that highway yeah. noise. Yeah, I love the waterfall. The choice of rocks, like this rock right here with that big undercut edge is so cool. This waterfall is cool with the little grotto-y area yes. that goes back in At there. At night time, it just blows up. Oh. Actually, pointing out the rocks, one of the things that I thought, like my mind working was, I tried to go with a lot of the weathered limestone yep. down here, and I went with the mossy mountain boulders up top. In nature, you would find the mossy mountain boulders in, in the mountains, and then this stuff, kind of carving away at the earth and creating that limestone-y type look, so. Wow, deep, Trevor. A Jeez. lot of thinking went into it. <laughs> Four months, I, it's, it's too I long. Could, I <laughs> might use that tomorrow on my next consultation. <laughs> <laughs> and then the rounded granite boulders were water is weathering, you know, rolling things right. Even the placement of the gravel, like I'm so into like separating the small gravel from the big gravel and it's just, it's so great. I can't wait to see it mature. Was it worth it? Ah. Would you do it all over again? Ooh. <laughs> it was 100% worth it. I wouldn't trade it for the world. The experience with myself, my dad, I gotta give a big shout out to my dad. He had a major part to play in this and everybody else, it was so much fun to get it done. <laughs> Don't forget your father-in-law who, father uh, who left you a machine. The machine right? was a like huge plus. Otherwise, none of this could have happened. You're welcome, father-in-law. <laughs> I didn't forget you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just something that, you know, we're gonna live with for years to come and it's just gonna get better and better as it goes. All right, Trevor, you knocked this thing out of the park unbelievable but I can't help but think like you and your your department over there in the tech department if you were to give any advice to anybody about their first project what would you tell them <laughs> don't jump don't into do this, this. <laughs> um, we, we hear it a lot where where people want to jump in and do either the swim ponds or the super complex jobs but this isn't my first feature as mm -hmm. much as like you know I, I definitely thought it out and spent a lot of t a lot of time to start. You did, because I remember like over the winter, you drawing it up and drawing it up, and Brian, what do you think of this design? What yes. do you think of this design? And it's It's been a long time coming, very well thought out, yep. right? Not just, okay, this is what I'm doing and I'm going with it, right? And, and then the time that you have to invest into it. The, this is family time that was, you know, lost. Gained at the same time, right? I got to work with my father and father-in-law, but that wow. was time that they don't And you're lucky it, they right? still love you, right? Because yeah, four I, months is like that was, yes. a big commitment on their part. It sure was. It would be go in and make sure you know what you're doing and be confident about knowing what you're doing by talking to the right people. You guys use the tech department. They're there for you guys to use. They help you so you don't make any of the mistakes. They're going to try to expedite some of that stuff so you're not spending four months on it. Or they might say, hey, look at this, look at that. Here's the right size pump. Here's the right size liner. Use them. This was an awesome, awesome episode for me to be part of. Thank you so much for inviting me into your backyard. This is so cool. Hey guys, tell me what your favorite part is. You know the process. Like, comment, subscribe, and we'll keep doing this. Bye. Bye.